Good evening. I'm sorry. It's me tonight. I did, I did leave them in the crowd, though, so they'll pick you up. As long as I can pitch it right. We're going to sing a few songs, and then we'll have Jeffrey bring us a lesson. Uh, thank you so much for being here this evening. Uh, we'll, we'll try to keep the level up, but it's going to be down a notch or two. And y'all think those guys are all that? I sing with them all the time. They're not all that. They're just good. Living by faith. No, do mi so ti do. See, I can do it, Wayne. No, I care not today what the morrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth o'er everything, and all of my worry is vain. Hey, yo. 
Thank you for the interest that's shown by each one who has uh, taken time to leave the uh, cares of what they were doing uh, to come here to this building this evening to, to gather to study, to worship, to give praise, and to give encouragement to one another. Thank you so much for hearing our prayers. Thank you for being a God who is so caring, so loving, and provides so much for us. We're praying, God, that as we worship you tonight, that you are truly honored for who you are and that we're encouraged as we leave this place to go live more for you each day. In Jesus' name, amen. I stand in awe. Let's stand.
Good evening. I ask you to open your Bibles, please, to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2 will be our starting point this evening. Hope you brought your Bibles with you. We'll be in Galatians chapter 2 and in verse 20 in just a moment. I'd like to echo some of the words that were said this morning. What a blessing it has been for us to be together this weekend, to close out a week and to begin a new week, lifting up our voices in praise to God, strengthening and encouraging one another, teaching each other in these songs. I can think of no better way or no better thing than to be in God's house with God's people, lifting our voices to Him. And that tells me that I'm reminded of the words of Paul in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 where Paul says all spiritual blessings are in Christ. And thinking about all the baptisms we've had the past few years, it makes me emotional thinking that when people give their life to Christ by the plan of God, they're in the possession of God. They are God's now. They don't belong to some med-made, denominational, sectarian type of belief, but they belong to God. They belong to the blood-bought, heaven-sent, spirit-filled institution known as the Body, Congregation, Assembly, and Church of Christ. You tell me a better spiritual blessing than belonging to Jesus. And that brings us to Galatians chapter 2 this evening, where as we see the central message of the book is really given to us in Galatians 2 and verse 20. And where Paul answers the age-old question of what is it to be a Christian? What is it like? What does it mean? What is it to be a Christian? Paul is in the midst of an explanation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in the context of what we were going to be discussing this evening, We read how there are some false brethren who are calling these Gentile Christians to be circumcised and follow some aspects of the law of Moses in order to be saved. But Paul says that that is not what saves. We see in verse 16 of Galatians chapter 2 that it is our justification, our right standing before God is through faith in Jesus Christ. And he says in verse 19, For through the law I died to the law, so that I might live to God. This brings us to verse 20, where Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. This is what it means to be a Christian. This is it. This is the message. This is the life that we live. And these statements made that Paul made about himself really ought to apply to all of us. Those who are Christians and those who are desiring or want to be a Christian should heed these words as well. And what we would like to do this evening is simply go through Galatians 2 and verse 20 and see what Paul has in store for us here. Paul starts it this way, I have been crucified with Christ. We know in context, as we mentioned earlier, Paul is talking about the law of Moses and the law of Christ. And we know Paul's earlier life, his dedication to the law of Moses was unquestioned. He cherished it. It was his life. It it was everything that he did and lived for. But there was one thing it did not do, the law of Moses. It did not make him alive to God, as we see there in verse 19. And likewise for us, if we can make application from that, whatever it is that we love and trust, it may not be the law of Moses per se, but whatever it is we love and trust, the center of our life, what we are focused upon, we must be willing to set inside in favor for Christ Jesus. If we are to be justified by faith in Jesus, as we see there in verse 16, that means that we are no longer alive. It is no longer I who live this body. We have become dead to self and we've made it alive to God in Christ Jesus. Now, if you hear this language, you probably are thinking of Romans chapter 6, and rightly so, because Paul told the Romans the very same idea, that we must be united with Him in the likeness of His death. That is Jesus Christ. 
in Romans 6 and verse 5. And he explained how, how that was done. We are to become dead to sin, Romans 6 and verse 11. Well, how do we do that? We are baptized into Christ. Paul wrote this, Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into His death? Therefore, we have been buried with Him through baptism into death, Romans 6. In verses 3 through 4. And Paul oftentimes uses this expression with Christ to identify his and our relationship with Christ. He says this, we have died with Christ from the basic principles of this world. Colossians 2 and verse 20. We have been made alive together with Christ. Ephesians 2 and verse 5. Our life is now hidden with God in Christ. Colossians 3 and verse 3. And then he says this, Now that we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. Romans 6 and verse 8. Paul says Christ lives in us when we put to death our carnal desires, our worldly enticements, our fleshly lust, and allow Jesus to live in us. And that is the very next natural sequence of events of that verse in Galatians 2 and verse 20 where Paul says, it is no longer I who live. Paul did not say that he died a literal death. He was still alive in the flesh but was no longer living for Paul, no longer living for the past. He told the Corinthians this very thing in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 15 speaking of Jesus that he died for all so that they who live might no longer live for themselves but live for the one who died and rose again on their behalf. And if I can suggest this, this is what we must do as well. We should live for Christ rather than for ourselves. Well, how do we do that? How do we make that happen? To do this, we must be willing to make some sacrifices. We must be willing to make some sacrifices. Paul said this, Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice. It is Jesus who said in Luke chapter 9 and verse 23, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must take up his cross daily, denying himself, and follow me. A reminder is given later in the book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 24, after Paul lists the different fruits of the Spirit, the natural characteristics and life descriptions that should come from those who belong to Jesus Christ. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and with its desires. We must lay aside our own desires and give our lives wholly to Jesus. Give our lives wholly to His sacrifice. We must be willing to make that sacrifice and live for the one who lived and died for us and rose again on our behalf. We must be willing to take up our cross daily and follow Jesus each and every day and we must crucify our passage and desires because it is no longer us who controls our life. Our old lives must be put to death so that we are not the one who was living this life but Christ is. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, if anyone is in Christ they are a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And since we are no longer the ones that are living, Christ lives in me and you. Christ living in us, brothers and sisters and friends, is not a literal or mystical or physical type of idea. It is simply a spiritual idea. We understand that Christ dictates how we live in our obedience to Him and to His will. We noticed in our previous points in Romans chapter 6 that our old lives are put to death so that we are no longer the one who is living, but Christ is the one who is living in us. And I want to tell you that Christ lives in us through faith. Paul wrote to the Ephesians and said this in Ephesians 3 and verse 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the words of Christ in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. So the question is, how do we know that Christ is dwelling in us? How do we have Christ dwell in us? How do we get rid of self and have Christ live in us? Well, I'm going to simply tell you this, and so much more could be said. But we live according to His words. It is His words that will judge us on the last day, John 12 and verse 48. But we live according to the Bible. We need to live as Jesus lived this life in obedience to God. 
and he left us an example to follow in his steps, 1 Peter 2 and verse 21. And that tells us our next point, that we must live by faith in the Son of God. Faith is the essential component in order to please God and to be justified before Him. The Hebrew writer tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 that without faith, it's impossible to please God. But those who wish to come to Him must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently or seek Him. Paul said in Romans 5 and verse 1, Therefore we have been justified through faith in Christ, and now we belong to God. As Paul wrote earlier, I live by faith in the Son of God. We must believe this about Jesus, that He is the Son of God and not just simply a man. So what does it mean to have faith in Jesus? What, what is, what's involved in that? We must recognize who Jesus is. Not only is, is He the Son of God and has those divine attributes, He is a divine person, but He is also our Savior. And salvation is through Him and no one else. As Peter says in Acts 4 and verse 12, there is salvation in no one else, so no name has been given under heaven by which we must be saved. He is called the Lord because He by His own admittance said that I have all authority. Matthew 28 and verse 18, He is also our judge and we are going to be accountable to Him. And all of this points to the importance of obedience. That's what faith really is. We have to have faith in Christ, but faith without obedience does us no good. On Wednesday evenings, me and the teens are studying from the book of James. And if I could ask them right now what the book of James is about, Camden's smiling, she knows. They'll tell you with a broad brush, the book of James is about faith. And a long detail is given in James chapter 2 about you can say you have faith, but you don't act on that faith. It's useless. It's dead. Faith without works is dead. I can say all day long that I have faith in Jesus, I have faith in God, but if I don't show my obedience or show forth my works, it does no good. And James even gives the illustration that even the demons believe that God is one, but they don't act off of that belief. We must act according to what He has commanded us to do and what He has authorized us to do. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to the Father through Him. Colossians 3 and verse 17. And in the end, Jesus will be our judge. And in the end, He is going to judge us according to what we have done, whether good or bad. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. So I want to say this. We must live by faith, but faith is more than just belief. And this is our, our life banner. Christ has made me alive in the life I live by faith in Him. Faith is the identifying mark that shows we belong to Jesus. Faith is seen as Christ alive in us and us putting to death our old ways, our old desires, our old life. Faith is what shows that we belong to God. Faith in Jesus to give one's life to Him and to crucify self is the basis for our obedience to His covenant. You see, true faith, that true acting obedience and belief, that that will generate repentance and confession and baptism and faithfulness and all the other acts that uh, God has called us to do and be because Jesus is what is alive in us now. And we know that we are in a relationship with Jesus because we can point to the faith in our lives that He is what's moving us. We love Him and now He controls our lives and we give our lives to Him because He loves us. And that brings us to our final point this evening. He gave His life for us. Jesus' death on the cross is the, heart, is the very heart, the very message of the gospel, the good news. If you turn back a chapter earlier in the book of Galatians and notice Galatians 1 and verse 4, Paul says, Jesus in context, who gave himself for our sins so that he might rescue us from this present evil age. Paul also told the Ephesians the very same type of message in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 2 that Christ loved us and because He loved us He gave Himself as a sacrifice that is pleasant to God for us. And I cannot talk about this without talking about the message that Paul gave to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 3. 
Paul says, For I deliver to you as of first importance. What is the first importance? What is the most important thing? Paul says, I deliver to you as of first importance that which I received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He died and was buried and rose again. That is the, the, the first importance that Christ gave Himself for us. That's why we crucify ourselves. That is why Christ lives in us and now we live to Him because of that. He willingly laid down His life for us uh, in John 10 by His own words in verses 17 through 18. He does all the things that are pleasing to the Father. What was the Father's plan before time began? That Jesus would come and give His life for us. This statement not only applies to Christians, brothers and sisters, but this statement applies to all people. If I were to ask the whole world, what is the most famous verse in all the Bible? I think without hesitation the answer would be John 3.16. And we know what John 3.16 says. For God so loved the world in this way, that He gave His one and only unique Son, that whoever believes in Him would not perish, but have eternal life. And for those of us who are Christians, we know that He loved us before we loved Him. And He gave Himself as that atoning sacrifice, that appeasement to the Father for our sins. In 1 John 4 and verse 10. Paul said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. And Jesus said this, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. John 14 and verse 15. And as he gave himself up for us, we must give ourselves up for him as well. Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And because of that, he says, the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Would you bow with me, please? Our great God and Father, you are holy. And it's because of you sending your Son and our obedience to him, we are now holy. And mere words cannot express the thankfulness that we have for you and what you have done for us. We're thankful that your son loved us and gave himself for us, that now we can live for him and for you. And Father, it is our prayer that as anybody here this evening who would like to become a Christian, that they would do so. Or if there's anyone here this evening who would like to rededicate their life to you, we ask for that as well. Be with us, Father, and forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Paul was able to make these words, these statements with confidence. And I think we should step back and ask ourselves, can we say the same thing in the same confidence that Paul had? Have you been crucified with Christ? Can you honestly say that you no longer live for yourself, but that Christ lives in you? Do you live by faith? Do you demonstrate that by, by making your love, by sacrificing your life to Him in different ways and different areas? This is what we are called and invited and told to do. When we experience that spiritual crucifixion, we become dead to sin and alive to God, and we have that abundant life in Christ that Jesus, and only Jesus, came to give. A life of pardon, a life of power, a life of peace, a life of purity, and most importantly, He gives us a life with a real purpose. It is a life of faith, and through faith we realize what Christ did for us, that none of us could ever do this for ourselves. See, our faith in the faith is what gives us access to God. Through our obedience to the gospel, we can enjoy union with Christ and allows us to live by faith. It allows us to walk by faith. And Lord willing, one day it allows us to die in faith. Are you in Christ this evening? The Hebrew writer tells us that only those who are in Christ will be saved on that last day. Only those in Christ. I would dare not say that if Scripture didn't say it. He learned obedience from the things that he suffered that he might become the source or the cause of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Hebrews 5, 8 and 9. 
It is the same Jesus who said in Matthew 7 and verse 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven will enter. Are you willing to do the will of the Father this evening? We beg and plead with you, if you're not a Christian, become one this evening. Become simply a Christian. Come forward, confess in your belief that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Repent of your sins. That is a change of life, a change of thinking, a change of way, and give your life to Him. Be ready to give, submit to Him in immersion in water, raised to walk in that newness of life, being a new creature, having a new start. Old things are done. Behold, new things have come. And you live faithfully to Him. And the results are out of this world. But you must become a Christian. If you're here this evening, how was your walk with God? Whatever we can do to assist you, we ask that you would come as we stand and sing for your encouragement. Oh. being here next week we go back to small groups josh same hosts same facilitators okay same everything okay just different material correct all right small groups start next week for four weeks or is it five four okay four weeks then we're back here again that's all i've got hey thank you for being here this evening thank you jeffrey for your lesson um We'll sing one more song and we'll have a, a closing prayer. Uh, the Lord's Supper's been left prepared over in room eight and nine as we sing this song. If you want to partake, please go there. And one of you men's gonna have to go back there because I doubt anybody's assigned. Oh.
Will you bow with me, please? Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this uh, wonderful opportunity uh, to, uh, to come here and hear another lesson from your word. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will help us to, to remember to always be grateful for this opportunity, this, this freedom that we have to come together and, um, and, and learn more about your word and, and of course, sing, sing praises of, of, of glory and honor to you. We pray that, that, that your name was, was uh, glorified in a way that, that was pleasing to you this weekend. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will be with each and every one of us. Help us to, to always be grateful, to have a mind, mind of gratitude. Help us to definitely be humble in our interactions with people and, and the world. But we also pray, Heavenly Father, for, for courage and boldness because we know that you are the, the author of our salvation, the creator of everything. So help us to, to always remember to be, be humble, but also be bold in our faith, because we know that, that you are the, the way to eternal life. So we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will give us the courage to, to, to face temptation, help us to overcome it, Please forgive us of our sins and help us each and every day to be a little better than we were the day before. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.